If you ever thought about getting a successful mentor or coach and you actually want me, Spectacular Smith, to actually coach you and become your mentor, I'm actually so excited about releasing my online school, Spectacular Academy, where I'm actually going to teach you live once a month different skill sets that's actually going to help you change your life for the better transformational information that I'm going to give you guys access to. I have a formula to success that every single company that I ever touched turned into gold. And I have over 14 companies. Okay. And all of them have the same type of success. So I want to teach you everything that the school system should have taught you. You know, everything that I know and how I built these fast growing companies and these award winning companies and show you real curriculums that I'm going to break down. You're going to have access to me. I'm going to be live in the chat rooms. I'm going to be live in the Facebook groups and personal communities that I'm going to give you guys access to of like minded entrepreneurs. So you're not by yourself on this mission. Not only you have me as a coach and a mentor, but you actually have your peer to peer people that's going to push you and root for you on the way to the top. Guys that's on the same exact weight limp that you are on and want the same exact results because my game plan is to change the way the school systems teach and teach you the things that need to make an impact in your life. Things that's going to be a high ticket skill that you can use forever where you don't never have to worry about going broke or not eating at night because once you learn how to market and brand yourself then you can eat for a lifetime you get access to my team and everything if you want to go to my free training just to get a sample of the things that's going to be in my program you can actually go to specmentorme.com or i'm gonna put it in the bio only take a certain amount of people every single month so reserve your seat and do not procrastinate because you might just miss out. Now let's get to the podcast. What's up, everybody? This is Spectacular Smith and welcome to the Spectacular Spirits. Hey, I have a question. So I had my business in Florida, but mm -hmm. I didn't start yet at the time. So mm -hmm. like on my way here stuff. So then I went to um when I moved to New York, that's where I wanted to do my business. But you got federal and state tax. So one question is should I try to do my LLC in Florida where it's like better for businesses mm -hmm. or just keep it where I'm at? Because I really want it in New York. Mm -hmm. And number two, when I did that, you have to do like article organization. It's crazy. I had to pay someone to do it. Like mm -hmm. you got to put in the article for in New York, you got to put in the article. Once you pay for it online LLC, you got to do um, two different articles weekly and daily. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's done. It's almost over. I got my EIN number. And um, um, do I need a DUNS number? Like my son was like, you need a DUNS number. You need a DUNS number. With my EIN number, I can get like a business account. Like a checking account for my PayPal purchase and stuff like that. But do I need a Dunn's number? Like, what is the Dunn's mm -hmm. number? Mm -hmm. Like, what is that? Is that necessary? Yeah, I mean, certain companies look for that. I mean, that's good, building your credit and all that stuff. But you could just Google that stuff. A lot of that stuff, like I tell a lot of people that ask me certain questions, if it's like Googleable, then it's like it's a Google away from you learning right. everything away from knowing all that but yeah you could figure out like what exactly it is and what all is great for if i tell you one or two is not you need to really dig into it and see if that's something you, you want for your business right. uh, if i was you i would just get it everything that you need you know i would get as much things as possible for the business to to make sure you're just making it look as credible as possible um, right i'm not really stressing it but yeah it's not, it's not, it's not one of those like, things where it's like well, i need to do this right right now right yeah, it's not one of those things. You can run your company without it. Okay. Um, do you recommend like so? I only know about a little bit about marketing, 
because in this time right now, like, I've been reaching out to people that are, like, celebrities, and they've been getting back to me about promotion when I'm ready to put out my product. Mm -hmm. How should I go about marketing if you're a new business? How do you think you should go about marketing? Because I have something that's different, people will like What's your company? It's a hair business. I'm going to be putting out a flat a hair tool, but it's super mm -hmm. different, and it's dope. So I've been, like, looking into celebrities. And that's like not too high, something where I can afford with the post and stuff like that. Do you recommend that? Because I've yeah. got a lot of feedback. Yeah. And absolutely. I would definitely do that. I would go in and study your competitors and I would go see who they're using. Right. Wh whoever they're using, I mean, they're working. So I would go and I would just literally shadow the right. hell out of them. If right. they post on the celebrity page and I'm going to reach out to the celebrity, see how much they charge. And then I'm going to go post on their page. If you see another. So basically follow, follow as many influences and people you see. So when you see these hair companies right. post on their page, you go and you say, hey, how much do you charge for promo? And that way, if they're already using them, they know they work already. Right. So nine out of ten. They might they might be testing them, but nine out of ten, if you continuously keep seeing them over and over again, that means that they're actually working for that company. All right. Okay. I'm gonna get All to right. the next caller. All right. All right. Bye bye. good, Lee. All right, listen, if y'all got a small business, man, y'all press one in the chat box, man. I'm going to throw y'all on live. I want to make sure everybody who's sending me requests got a got an actual business. I want to answer some real business questions, man. So if y'all got a real business, press one, small business owners. All right, let's get some game out. Hello. Hey. Oh, wait, hey, I, got my, I got my Zoom. Hello. I didn't, think, I didn't think you would really go live with me neither, so... Wait, you on? What's up? Um. Well, my my godmama has a small dance company of her own, and she's trying to expand as far as like getting studios, you know. So, what's like some advice you get her starting her own business? Like, where's your auntie? The bottom. Hey, how you doing? What up? You grab your phone. Right I want to talk to the business owner. She Are you the, the business owner? I'm the business owner. How but you doing? I'm the grab the phone. Grab the phone. <laughs> it's your time. All right. So cool. So what's your what's your biggest challenge right now? The the Corona is the biggest challenge because oh, okay. whenever schools go out, I'm out because I don't have any students. I have to follow when the schools close. And what exactly do you do for your students? Um. Well, we teach jazz lyrical contemporary majorette all dance mm -hmm. so what if you do this what if you take all your students and you tell them hey you know we're doing a 50 percent discount for our virtual lessons right. and you basically do a text blast to every last one of them say hey this week every single week we're doing uh 50 off for our virtual dance trainings and you create a zoom channel and then you send everybody who purchased a Zoom link, right? And you make them, you set up a page on ClickFunnels. It could be Eventbrite. And you create a page and you just tell them like, hey, here goes the link. You put in the description everything that you're going to be doing that day. And every single week, you pick a day that you're going to be doing your dance rehearsal. So you can break down whatever, whatever actual uh, different curriculums you have. And you can charge per one. Or you can just, you know, you know your business better than I do. But just make it virtually where everybody can join and they will pay. They will be right in their home. A lot of people are trying to figure out things to do right now. So if you offer it, then they're willing to get it. But if you're not offering it, then pretty much they won't purchase. It, right. Right. I'm trying to make sure I stay within reality because so many people are struggling. They've lost jobs. And things that's why like I said 50% off selective it is that's a, why i say 50 percent off so you're not you losing 100 percent of your money and they're not spending 100 percent of their money right right all right all right I peace. I'm gonna thank you so much go get that bag you're welcome my my dance company is tss underscore dance company so if anybody has kids who are in the detroit area look me up <laughs> this is a, this is a virtual this is a virtual dance class so when is your next dance class how much is 50 percent off and where can they purchase so they can go and and join your dance class? And what type of what type of dance classes you do? You might have people right now that want to jump in. Oh, uh, we're gonna be doing 
jazz, contemporary, lyrical, and majorette styles, and hip hop. So we're probably going to get the virtual classes started going next week. Give everybody a little bit of time to get themselves together. Hey, yeah, that's me. Hey, Kyra. Hi. But um, <laughs> but everybody just. The information to be on my page later on today. Again, it's TSS underscore Dance Company. Just go follow my page. Type and it in the chat. All right, type we'll it do. in the chat. We'll do. Thank you so much. Say say this is say this is me, and then put your put your Instagram name. All right. All right, we'll do. Thank you. All right, peace. Bye. All right, if y'all got a business, press one in the chat box so I can put you guys on. I need all business owners. All business owners. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up with you? Good afternoon. Should I say good evening? So I was inside of your webinar not too long ago, and I got some mm -hmm. valuable information. I wanted to backtrack on something you said just a moment ago. You stated that a lot of people are not out, are out of work and trying to find something to do. Thanks to you and your webinar, I recently just launched my own closet. Now, I know you wonder, how did I do that? And I know everyone's like, how did you do that? A lot of Poshmark. We have sites like Poshmark or Depop. Unfortunately, I decided instead of going through a third party site and getting, let's say, some money taken off 20% by using that site, I went ahead and went to BitCartel and be able to place all my items on that site directly. I made my first sale today. I made my first sale for 470 Everybody say congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Um, not only does that, YouTube. I just hit 7,000 subscribers on YouTube, and by placing videos each day, I was able to get monetized back in January. YouTube sent me a check for $300. It's nice, crazy by nice. taking this time and idolizing this time and use mm -hmm. it. And you also put me on to something else. Thanks to you, you put me on. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say thank you and put out that information to let other people know that in this time, we can use it very valuable. You just have to be resourceful. Do not let nothing stop you. No one stop you. There's so many ways to do a source of income. If there's something laying around your house, there's something you're good at. If you know how to make something happen, start, start a webinar, start a class, teach us something mm -hmm. during this time because everyone is willing to learn. Everyone is glued to their phones, willing to learn as much information as possible. We are thank literally you. sponges. So thank you so much for all of the love that you're giving us. Absolutely. That's all I got for you. <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, God bless you. Stay, stay thriving, man. And keep, keep that spectacular academy going, all right? No worries. Blessings to everyone watching. Stay safe. And thank you so much, Spectacular, for your wisdom and knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. My brother, John. At. What up? What up, bro? <laughs> good, man. How are you, man? I'm feeling good. Just, you know, just home chilling. Doing my thing, bro. We're all on house arrest, man. What else are you going to do? <laughs> hey, listen, listen. This is a prime example that I never want to go to jail. <laughs> See, I've been there, so I know this is nothing compared to how it used to be. Man, if that that's jail, I don't, if this is – oh, no. I want to – I can't – it's too no. much, man. No, man. Hey, Siri, turn this off. I didn't expect to get out here. I was, you know, hanging out with Siri today, you know, cooking some burgers on the grill, you know, yeah. hanging out, man, quarantined. Yeah. Doing my thing. Stay my safe to the people, man. So let me, let me go ahead. Hey, what's what up? Half? The <laughs> other half. I know you look incomplete. Now I see you complete, John. I see now I'm that. complete. Now I'm there complete, go. man. I don't uh -huh. function properly without her by my side, man. I'm, they I'm still trying to figure. They still trying to figure out the game on how she did it. You want to? You want to throw? You want to jump on it and yeah. give them the game? She's selling the course, bro. She's going to sell the course on how to do it. $50 a person. $50 a person. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how she did it, man. I don't yeah. know how this happened. I'll yeah. tell you my secret. How she sugar put a daddy. ring on my finger, bro. I don't know, man. That's I'll sugar see. daddy right there. Got him locked down and everything. <laughs> hey, I thought, but that's my sugar mama. They don't realize that's sugar mama right there, man. She gives me my allowance. I'm trying to get a Chanel bag or something, man. I want some red bottoms. 
<laughs> like, come on, please, oh, man. Sugar mom. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So right now, I just, you know, I'm in the vibe of like, I'm, I'm in the teaching vibe. So right now, you know, I know you've been on with my students before and, you know, you did a billion dollars in sales and, and, you know, on paper, you're a billionaire, man. That's what it is. And, and, I, and at the same time, you're always giving back to the people. So what are some words of a wisdom that you would tell everybody who's watching right now on somebody who's going through this coronavirus thing right now? What would you Look, say to I, them? I, what I would tell everyone, there is a massive shift happening right now. There's a shift of wealth that, that's happening. You're going to see a lot of people over the next 12, 24 months that we've never heard of, had no idea they existed. They're right now in their laboratories creating, you know, the... The next thing and i don't know what that is and but we're going to find out because it's happening right now people talk a lot about millionaires being made during depressions right we hear that all the time i will tell you this that if you go back to the 19 you know 29 uh, great depression we didn't create more millionaires directly from that matter of fact we went from uh we lost about 35 percent of the world's millionaires right after that but within 24 months you know, by the time we got to World War II, millionaires were, were popping up left and right because there was a great shift. So a lot of the, a lot of the people, a lot of the businesses that haven't been doing it right, you know, you, hey, you know there's a lot of people got rich in the last 10 years. They kind of fell into it. They weren't doing the right thing necessarily. They weren't providing big value, big services. They weren't doing what you were doing. Right. And, and they're, getting, they're getting killed right now. They're, they're decimated. They're going to be gone in a whole new group, people that really care, that are coming up, providing real solutions the great entrepreneurs, man. You know, mm -hmm. th this epidemic is not going to be solved by the government. No nothing is ever solved by the government necessarily. It's going to be solved by entrepreneurs. You know, they're coming up with this thing. So I'm just telling people, keep thinking. Stay in your laboratory. Keep thinking. And, and when your negative feelings get in the way of your goals, get in the way of the things you want to do, you got to get rid of your feelings. I see people all the time. They're all in their feelings right now. I'm like, look, if those feelings are not progressing you, they're not moving you one step closer to where you should be, where you have the potential to be, then you have to get rid of those feelings. You can do that. And some people don't give a lot of credit for that. Every day, man, some days I wake up, I'm like, man, I don't feel like doing nothing. And I realize that's a negative thing coming over me. I got to purge that, get it out of my life, and get right back in the trenches. Today, one of my, my good friends, Sweets, who used to be the uh, strength and conditioning coach for the San Francisco Giants powerhouse. If you get a chance to follow Sweets or check him out, a-Rod, Barry Bonds, or some of his clients, Powerhouse, he opened up his gym for us today. I did not want to go. I was hoping he would say, John, I, I can't give you the keys to the gym, bro. I, don't, mm -hmm. I didn't want to go and work out. But you know how it is. After I did the thing, I got the power. After I did, and that's why I'm sweating and I'm still in my, my workout clothes. After I went in there and I, let, I, got, I purged those negative feelings about working out, got rid of it, did what I had to do, and I left, man. I felt, look, I got the adrenaline pumping. I'm over here. I'm in the lab. I'm creating. I got stuff all around me. I'm reading. I'm coming out, bro. I want to. There's a whole bunch of businesses. There's a whole bunch of people. How do I? I want to dethrone. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's time for them. They've been on it for too long. It's kind of like the person that was born with the silver spoon in their mouth. You know, they. At some point, we got to rip the spoon out their mouth. Take that damn spoon and go out here and deliver in a big way. Do it better, faster, more efficient, and we're gonna mm -hmm. write our own ticket. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm excited about what what's going to come out of this. I'm not happy about a lot of people that are getting hurt right now and and are feeling the economic pinch. But we have we have a real opportunity here to readjust ourselves and reassess, right. reassess and reevaluate and reset. Yeah, I think right now the main thing for me is for people to understand what this means. This means that this is the time to slow down. This is the time to take your time serious. I think so many of us are actually having the opportunity to do more when we choose to do less. We choose to be lazy because our mind automatically leans towards what's easiest for us. And when we get out of the comfort zone of that and saying, listen, this is the time to double down on the stuff that I know I should be doing. Oh, I, I lost my job. This is the time for me to start that business that I always wanted to start. They just helped me accelerate the process of me starting that business and instead of looking at the negative in this situation you can think of the positive like okay what positive in this situation can i take out of this and then once you start really slowing down a little bit and wrapping your mind around this is what i should have been focusing on 10 years ago 
And sometimes it takes for something like this to happen for you to understand that maybe you didn't need that job. You know, maybe you didn't need those friends around you and, and you're practicing social distancing. Now you're realizing that, hey, I feel more happy not around those people. I feel more pleasant. I feel more I feel more energetic when I don't have this energy vampire around me. And now you get to really sit back and analyze your life. You get to analyze your time and the things that you was doing. You get to analyze the things you wasn't doing. You get to analyze the thing that you should be focusing on. And then you double down on it. You focus on it. You think about right now is the time where you breathe. You start breathing leaders. You start breathing, breathing people who who are going to be legendary in the future because this is the time when you realize what you really made of when you're back against the wall is when you start seeing your p full potential come out if a dog jump out start chasing you right now you're gonna run as fast as you ever ran in your life why because you feel like your life is on the line right so you're gonna you're gonna figure out a way to make it happen so i think right now is the time that you gotta sit back figure out how could you make it happen especially if your back is is against the wall right now man spec that you are so on point you know we've been we've been so programmed and conditioned by whether it's government you know our bosses you know the jobs whatever it is we've been programmed i mean we we go you know we take our break when we're told to we take our two-week vacation when we have enough seniority to we're on this 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 rat race or on this wheel this hamster wheel that we can't stand we don't really like it but we don't know how to get off of it. They just, they just let us off. You know, we get a right. chance to now deprogram ourselves like Carnegie, when he took everyone from being entrepreneurial and, and farmers and entrepreneurs, and you know, you either farm the land or you had a business or you didn't eat. It was that simple. Carnegie, right. he, he helped us trade our freedom for his security, which is green pieces of paper. And he got us working in his factories, you know, working at his stores, he built the education system that was only designed for us to work for him in the future. For our, yeah, when, when, the, when the bell was ringing at the schoolyard, it was the exact same bell ringing in the, in the factory. We were being yeah. programmed and conditioned to salivate like Pavlov's dogs early on. Look, we get a chance to break these chains right now. If you didn't like where you were before, well, look, man, you said it. Reset, change your associations, change your mindset. You do some new programming. Get on stuff like this. We're messing the world up. Spec you got so many people looking to you right now because you got you have influence. You've got a voice because you you got you're an entertainer number one. So people love entertainment, but you're using that power to bring people in and say, "Look, I can show you a way." Maybe maybe you're not gonna. Hey, I'm not gonna be on stage anytime too soon. You know, grinding my body, mm -hmm. but I can take that information that you've used to build a business around all this stuff because you're saying, "Look, I I can give you the tools." That's, that's messing up the establishment. That's messing up the people that are trying to get us programmed and conditioned to go to work for them every single day, mm -hmm. give up my dreams for their dreams. Oh, mm -hmm. hell no. Those days, yeah. they can come to an end right now. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? Because in that meeting where Derek Carnegie and the Rockefellers and Kennedys all sat down at the round table to create the school systems to actually be able to have a way to get the next batch of workers ready for when... The kids are in school, so when they get out of school, then they could come work in the factories. Because back then, when there was no schools, before it was invented, everybody was doing their own thing. Everybody was their own entrepreneur, and they couldn't find nobody to work for the, for the entrepreneurs. Yep. So once they actually found a way to get everybody prepared to understand when to keep people on time, that's why you hear bells ring. When a bell ring, you get up and you go. It's training you. Right. The whole system is training you. The books they're giving you to read the history books. There's no black people in the history books. Nobody want no black yeah. people is this. Right. The only time, you know, black people is this black history month. Other than that, it's yeah. all white people in the in the lit in the literature book. Right. So it's like everything so is brainwashed based on the way that they want you to think and what how they want you to move. They want you to be on time. They want they give you a tardy slip if you late. When the bell rings, you get to the next class, and they and they teach you how to go to one thing to the next, one thing to the next. What's up, Corey? Corey Jacobs, that's my brother. And then they teach you to go one thing to the next, and when you graduate, they prepare you to be the next worker. And that's why when you think about it, school don't teach you anything that you really can use in the real world. Why? Because it's not made for you to become a boss. It's only made... For you to become the best worker right and and if you got a bunch of bosses running around and who's gonna work who's gonna pick up the trash who's gonna like who's gonna do these different things and that way that way you can keep people at bay like 
no other way around it. They're not teaching you leadership. They're not teaching you credit. They're not teaching you how to do taxes. They're not teaching you. Listen, it's 365 days in a year. And five of those days are school days. Why out of all these days of 14, uh, 4,000 days, not only, you only need one, one day of school to teach all these different things in one day. If I give you one lesson in credit, you can use that one lesson I teach you in an hour for a lifetime. And you can go buy whatever the hell you want to buy. You can go buy, get a business loan. You can go get a personal loan. You can start your business. You can fund your business. Credit. Without credit, what can you buy without credit? When, no, I, they when, I, went to buy, when I went to buy my first property, they was like, oh, you don't pay yourself enough. I'm like, y'all making millions of dollars. You don't pay yourself enough. All right, cool. I got to pay myself enough. So now I, I pay myself. I triple my payment. I get myself a six-figure pay a uh, payroll and then when i go back to go buy something again they say hey you can only increase the amount of money you make to go towards the property you want to buy by 30 percent so even though i'm making a million dollars or or six figures a year it only can go up 30 percent so even if i make a hundred million dollars in one year and i only put a hundred thousand dollars on the book they only gonna count a hundred and thirty thousand dollars towards that property so wow. it's like all these different things i had to learn and i realized like wow like I can't believe this. And they're not teaching us in, this in school. They don't want you to know this, Beck. They don't want... Uh, black man knowing this stuff is, is dangerous. It's dangerous, bro. It's, it's, it's dangerous for anybody that's been beat down, been trampled on, downtrodden. It's dangerous for any of us to get a hold of that type of information. It becomes a threat to the establishment. This whole system was built on the Prussia system. If you look up the Prussia system, the Prussia system created two things. Great soldiers and great workers. They they marched when they were told. They went to work when they were told, and yes. they did it to prop up a handful of people. Right. I always say on, on the backs on the backs of many, few people ride. And that we got a system like this. There's a few people that are riding on all of our backs, man. And they and we're getting more and more tired, more and more frustrated. We're giving up, man. And now we're accepting their checks. Now this is now this is a problem. I tell my kids, I said, look, as long as I pay your bills. You're going to do what I tell you to do. Right. When the, when the government starts paying your bills, you're going to listen to the government. You're going to, you go, you're going to go to you're going to go into the house when they tell you you're going to wake up when they tell you. you look, it's a it's a dangerous game that we're playing. We're giving up more and more of our our freedoms every single day. And the government's saying, look, we got two trillion dollars going out to you. You're going to get six hundred. You're going to get twelve hundred. Oh, you're going to get this and that. And they start to control this whole thing, brother. We. We got bigger problems than, than what yeah. we got now. We got to start thinking and understand the system we're in. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, when people understand their power, then you're able to make better moves in life. Because when people they don't understand, people don't understand their power. That's why they're so busy just doing what everybody else is telling them to do. Because they don't even understand. Like you can start your own business if you wanted to. You're just too busy working on other people's business. That's why you can never start your own. Right. So you just got to think about that, man. And sometimes it's just work to try it. And, and I'm not even necessarily saying that entrepreneurship is for everybody. But yeah. I just want everybody who's listening to this to be able to move the way they want to move. If, yeah. you, and if you truly want to be a, a number two, then there's nothing wrong with being a number two. But at least if you know in your mind that you don't want to be a number two and you want to move the way you want to move or what, then at least take that risk, take that chance on yourself on the things that you're thinking about, that you want to do, your dreams and things that you want to do, then you got to take you got to take that risk. You got to take that jump. At least try. The biggest things that I hear from people who are old, and I like to talk to old people, say, what is some of the biggest lessons you learned in life? It's two things I always hear. One is regret. Two is spending time with their family. Yeah. Regret that they didn't do more. Right? You go your whole life trying to figure out how the hell can i retire how can i save into retirement instead of figuring out how can you invest and take calculated risk in order for you to get the things that you want so you can get the life that you want man look here's I, I, every time you and i connect bro it's it's a it's on a whole nother level man you get you get my my wheel spinning and i still remember the time when i i went to one of your concerts and you stopped the concert and you went out into the audience and you put up on the screen your number. And for, I don't know, 10,000 plus were in that auditorium, bro. I never seen, I've been to a lot of concerts. I've been to some of the biggest concerts in the world, never seen anything like this. 
and you you offered everybody in that auditorium because look we're suck we're consumers man we've become consumers that it keeps us trapped people are going to get these checks from the government soon and they're not going to take those checks and put it into like ben franklin one time said pour your bank account into your mind and one day your mind will pour back into your bank account oh it takes me that takes me that quote i want that i'm gonna I'm say that i'm gonna borrow that one <laughs> That's you, bro. This is what you do all the time. You, you're you telling people, look, I can help you take that. What, and it could be small increments. And that's what I love about what you do. You're like, I don't care who you are, what you've got. We've got something for everybody, no matter yes. what level you're at. But you got, I heard it one time from a mentor. He said, look, you don't have to be great to start, but you've got to start to be great. And, and so if you yeah, got to, I'm just wrapping them out, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's some real stuff, man. Oh my God, that's so real. And that's look, that's what we do, man. We we bring people together and we show them. You know my background. I was just saying, I cleaned out the garage the other day, which I would have never done had it been for a, an epidemic. And in the garage, I found the paperwork from my last felony conviction when I was 24 years old. And I'm going through this paperwork like, man, I'm so glad those days are over. But I remember my mentality back then, and it wasn't until somebody came in my life like you and said, bro, you can do better. You can be better. Stop blaming. Stop making excuses. Hold the mirror up to yourself and, and take the step. He said, one step. Pick up a book, man. Pick up a damn book. He said, you know why you can win here? Because half the world ain't even trying. How difficult is it to win a race? And nobody's running, man. I'm teaching the kids all over the place from the neighborhoods I grew up in. You got no competition. Mm. Stop playing games out here. Stop messing around. You can change the entire world. Your, that negative energy put into a positive direction. You run the world, man. Now, yes, all the ball game. You know, I just I, I, and look. So I'm telling people, take a portion of every dollar. Figure out when you get a dollar in, ten percent. Put it aside for passive investments. Another ten percent for active investments. Of course, you got to figure out your taxes. Give unto Caesars what Caesar you know gets. Whatever. But you got to have a plan for everything. And then anything you want, you can reverse engineer it. You can get around guys like Spectacular who knows how to take a dollar and turn it into a hundred dollars. Take a dollar, turn it into a thousand dollars. You can get around these people. And now we're getting them for free, man. We're getting on lives. We're getting your knowledge. We're getting your contacts, your wisdom, your access. This never happened in the history of mankind before. So whatever the government does, whatever the teachers do, whatever the police do, who cares, man? We're creating a community. We're creating a culture in-house that becomes unstoppable. We all start locking arms, and we start taking these principles. Matter of fact, what if we start built making the banks? What if we create community banks that are real banks that are lending to the people that really need the money? Because the only people that get money from banks right now are people that don't need the money, and the big money goes to their friends. You know, it's even right now, with, with all the games they're playing with, with uh, medical supplies, you know who's getting those deals? It's the politicians, you know, you know, brother-in-law. It's yeah. their friends and family. They're making they're making billions off of this epidemic. And while we're sitting at home waiting for a six hundred dollar check, come on now, something ain't right. Right. We, but we we could take it over. We could take it over. That no, we can. We we are. We're yeah. taking it over, right? Your yeah. your mentorship, my mentorship, like that's what it's gonna take. Any before we jump off, what what uh what are three books that you would recommend uh some entrepreneurs? You know, I, I'm 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 reading one right now. It was actually sent to me uh, in the mail. <laughs> it's an interesting title called "Everyone Ends Up Poor." Uh, if you can see that, mm. everyone ends up poor, and the dude goes is a, a major financial planner. He goes into we're all told, go to school so we can get a good education, and then we get a good education, we get a job. Then we put our money into our 401k, our IRAs. And in the first chapter, the very first thing I read, he tells a story about this dude. This guy saved in his IRA, went, worked his whole life. By 65 years old, he did what most people never do. He ended up with $751,362. He's thinking, this is great. I'm going to retire, live my golden years on a beach somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, the financial planner breaks down to him what really is about to happen. Number one, he's going to be taxed on that Tax, whole amount. Half of it gone. Half gone right there. Mm -hmm. Watch this. The guy goes through after the, the financial planner tells him, when this is all said and done, it's going to produce only $24,000 per year for you to live on. The guy goes through five stages of grief. Uh, he goes through denial, anger, bargaining, then depression. This dude's going to end up greeting at Walmart. And he did everything he was told to do his entire life. Followed the rules, and the rules 
F them. You know what I'm saying? This is what we're all, and, and look, right now, the average 50 year old, here the numbers. People lie, but the numbers don't lie. The average 50 year old doesn't even have $50,000 in retirement saved. If you ask the average American as a whole right now to come up with $1,000 cash, they can't do it. The average bankruptcy that, that was filed last year would have been avoided with an extra $500 per month spec. Five, that tells me we're walking a thin line between making or not making. You know what's missing? Information. You said you don't have to necessarily be an entrepreneur, but you got to think. You can't get through this thing without thinking. You got to put, mm. you, look, for me, I'm like, put the Xbox down for a minute, put the blunt down for a minute, change some of the thinking, get on stuff like this, start taking some notes, start writing some goals, start planning, start figuring out who really has your back, who has your solutions, not your problems. And all of a sudden, now we can buy, We can change this whole whole thing. We can change it. I'm telling you, man, I get goosebumps thinking about this. I get so charged about what we can contribute and, and what we can do. There's never We've never had platforms like this to do this. Yeah. And we, we all had to learn. You and I had to learn the hard way, this stuff. I mean, yeah. you had a dad that was a hustler. I had a dad that was a hustler. But he, he also worked in a steel mill, so he was limited. So, you know, we, my brother and I followed his, his footsteps. My sister died from a heroin overdose at 21 years old. You know, we had limited, limited resources, limited information, but because I had a heart attack from smoking cocaine at 17 years old, and I, I ended up incarcerated, I got, I ended up, I was four, I was one of the very few people that in that facility, there was somebody who saw more of me than I saw in myself. That usually doesn't happen. Usually you're getting beat down. You're, 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 you're coming out worse than when you went in. I was fortunate. I came out better than when I went in. It completely shifted my whole life. I got this information early enough and I started, I started, you know, executing a little bit, little bit, little bit, you know, took seven years, man, for me to crack a hundred thousand dollars. But once you have the information, they can never take it away again. Yes. My brother, Les Brown, I wrote a book with him called the power of one. He said, once your mind expands, it can never go back to its original dimension. Spec, you're doing this every day, man. You're expanding people's minds. It can't, it can't go back. It can never go back. Get this information. And then we become powerful together. Thank you, man. Thanks for thanks for the uh sharing the knowledge, bro. It's always a pleasure, man. Virgo hey, brothers, man. Virgo Nation, baby. Virgo Nation, yes, sir. Man. Hey, by then we'll be able to go out, I hope, by August. I think I think we we'll be, be able good. to go out again. We should be good. All right, bro. All right, bro. Appreciate you, man. Love you. Thank you, everybody. All I appreciate love you all too, the love. Bro. All right, peace. All right. That was my brother John Malott. Let's go, Marco. Let's bar it up, baby. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> Big facts. Yo, John just, just earned a follow like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Yo, he's I'm a, loving he's this. A, he's another one of the brothers, man. He, get, he definitely has an invitation to the barbecues. Yeah, um, oh, 100%, bro. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah. He, and he's, he, just... his knowledge is through the roof, and his energy is contagious, and he's definitely a great brother that's always trying to give back. But, yeah, <laughs> another good brother right here, Marco. is actually one of my <laughs> business partners, um, one of the companies that we're launching right now. But, Marco, man, you done been through a lot in your businesses. Uh, yeah. You know, you done had a $30 million company. Uh, you done been through the ups, the downs. Um, you don't realize how – how business can take over your personal life and just take over your life in general. Mm -hmm. Like what are some of the things that, that you can tell like somebody who might be starting a business going down that same path that you went down. Cause the fact that the matter, everybody's not going to be able to have a $30 million business. Right. Yeah, so yeah. the fact that you had major brands like Best Buy, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, you know, you name them, you had them. Uh, so what is, what is some advice? And, and can we get some light, Right in the back. Yeah, yeah. Like, see, you know, me, the guy who's telling move. on somebody on first forty. This way, I know. It looks like I'm on an interrogation line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, go ahead, Marco. Let's see. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think I think probably the biggest thing for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step in here because it'll be brighter when I turn this up real quick. Um, yeah, probably the biggest thing um, that was really important for me just starting off was definitely like being able to surround yourself with resources, um, you know, like you and John have been talking about is finding people that can be around you that believe in you, one that can support you, can mentor you and teach you the roads. Cause one of the things that 
probably um, stuck out for me the most. When my, my grandpa told me this a while back when I used to look up to people and I'd look at somebody that's got like a billion dollar business or like, yo, I want to be like this person or that person. As he would say, man, the only thing that separates you from somebody else is just history. They've just been there. They've been there before. And it's very similar to what we're talking about right now about that exposure. And for me, before I had exposure to raising capital or I knew anything about like loans or financial financials or a lot of that stuff like all i had was hustle and drive and it took people putting me on to understanding more about how to use my mind and actually make it more efficient that actually allowed me to progress a lot and then the, the second big piece that really hit me hard in the past few years though was really just understanding why i was doing what it was that i was doing so like really getting into this place where once I started really breaking down, like, all right, you know, what is what is my goal and why do I want to accomplish this? And is it for something bigger than just my success? Like, is it about like my happiness? Is it about my joy? Is it about a vision that I have in another five years that I want to accomplish and locking myself into that so that if I understand what my why is and I'm not just doing it just to do it, then I can really create something that I desire and, and feel like I have have sort of grown from a place where there's no limitation where the only limitation that i have is whatever i place on myself and that whatever anybody else tells me around me of like what i can or can't do or what situations i think i have to go into that i really adopt this mindset of really being that creator like i can create my path however i want mm -hmm. and which what do you feel like was one of your biggest lessons that you learned like what is the top three lessons that you that you feel like you learned in your journey? Ooh, man, no, number one is uh, money doesn't buy happiness. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a real one, because like getting to that place where I could pretty much have anything, be anywhere, and be around anybody and have all the access, and then finding out that like my milestones were just continuing to climb. I'm like, all right, you know, first I thought, I was hyped to make $10,000 a month. Then I thought like, all right, I'm hyped because I'm making you know $50,000 a month. Then I'm like, I'm hyped because I'm making $50,000 a day. And I got to a place where I'm upset when I'm making less than a million a month. Yeah, and I, I realized I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what is going on here? Like, I, just me a few years ago would have been hyped as hell about where I am right now. And that, that required me to, to step back and really look at like, what am I placing importance on? And that's, that's like one number one that i think is so important um and then you know, number two to this person saying well, when you finally happy is like probably the the number two lesson for sure was to focus in on myself first over the accolades and over the accomplishments so sometimes what people will do and i used to do this a lot is i create this like martyr mind right and it's very similar to even the retirement mindset where people talk about creating a life like later that, you know, right now, like, I got to grind out right now so that, like, you know, in 10 years, like, my family's going to be set. Or in five years, like, you know, I'm going to have this big retirement fund. But for now, I can just live shitty and just not really enjoy myself. And, like, that that right there, like, that's a fallacy. It doesn't mean that you don't get to work hard and that you don't get to create situations that may not be something that is, like, the most appealing or the easiest for you. But it does mean that ultimately you get to live every single day in this present moment, like enjoying your current day, not just for some shit that's going to happen in you know five years or ten years, because that shit may never happen. And that's mm -hmm. part of what you said too about regret. Is like you know that's that's the biggest thing that people live with is how they live their lives while they were alive, and then realizing that they stepped back and they never made it to that day when they were going to switch on and pay attention to family or pay attention to their lives or anything like that. So that's like a number two for sure. And I say the third, the third thing, um, man, it's, it's, uh, to be, be, I, I think, I think like be creatively curious, right? So that, that creatively curious is also not just being curious about yourself, but being curious about the people that are around you. Um, cause sometimes I think that, you know, in my life I've overlooked certain people or certain routes towards me getting some new knowledge or accomplishing a partnership because I had like a, a very fixed perspective where I thought like, I know what I'm doing 
And, you know, this is the way that I got to go. And maybe, maybe that route that I had created was a good route, but it didn't mean that it's the only route, right? Mm -hmm. And when I, when I become open to curiosity and I allow other people to contribute to me and I allow myself to even think like, yo, what if I tried a different way? Then I become flexible as all hell. And that flexibility allows me to see new opportunities. Like in my, my life, in my career, I stayed so focused on one path that I missed mad shit. Like I, I should have been running the digital for like so many of the largest celebrities and so much of like the biggest shit that is happening in the world right now. And I, I just still did some really big things. But in that path of me not being creative and being open to other opportunities, I closed down so many doors because I was mm -hmm. so tunnel vision. And I mean, you know, this it was hard as hell. They even kept <laughs> touching me for so long. Like, cause I, I would create that mindset that's like fixed on, there's only one way to get there. So when you're, when you're open to opposing opinions, you're open to other people that maybe haven't even achieved the type of success that you have. And you're like, what could this person teach me? But you're just willing to listen. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's been one of the biggest things. I've learned some of my biggest lessons from people just starting business that I thought like, oh, this person couldn't tell me anything and vice versa. I've learned lessons from people that I didn't like that I'm like, yo, I don't like the way this person thinks or like, nah, you know, what their, their method of thinking is not, not the vibe for me. And it's allowed me to actually expand my reality a lot. Mm -hmm. And so let's switch it. Let's switch it up a little bit. So that's what you yeah. learned. So tell me, how did you build a successful business? What are some of, some of the things that you did that made you successful in building your business? Ooh, boy. So I'll tell you a few things that um, really, really got me off. So one was me taking those opportunities, um, put me in a pretty good place because I started off with um, John Legend before he was famous. He was just a guy who was friends with one of my friends in college. And he was like, yo, I think, I think this guy's going to go somewhere. So like, I was like, yo, let's do some marketing with him. That was one, just that idea of taking risk, right? And just being there and being like, I'm going to put grind behind something that I don't know where it's going to go. But I know that like, I want to I wanna ride the energy that I feel around me. And I'm willing to take that risk of, you know, whether this becomes something or not, it's going to be experience. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that my risk, my initial risk, turned into a major artist that then went into E-40, to Rafael Sadiq, to Ludacris, to Chingy. And that, that really became, from me, back in 2002, really studying up and being on my grind in technology at the time when there wasn't a lot of people that were really paying attention to social media at that same way, like Facebook wasn't even around or anything. So I just really found a niche that I could learn a lot from and then applying that into music and entertainment. So I basically found a lane, right? And in that lane, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna own this lane super hard and I'm gonna be willing to be there for any and every opportunity out there that's related to that. So I'd show up at all the events, like at every single conference. So I was just constantly putting myself out there. And the, the one thing I know that always stood out for me and that really supported me is I carried this like confidence as if I already had been there, mm -hmm. even when I was starting. So like that's, mm -hmm. that's something that we start thinking about visualization and also like about embodiment. And we were talking about that earlier, like, um, you know, John and you were talking about just doing things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like, instead of you approaching something and saying like, you know, I'm not really here yet. Like, I, I don't know if like so-and-so is gonna pay attention to me. Like, you don't know until you try. Mm -hmm. and, and not only do you not know until you try, but based on how you show up is how people receive you. So if you show up as like, yo, I'm, I'm an expert and I'm, I'm ready to push my, my value out there and I've got something valuable for you. And I know I may only have started this like a year ago, but like I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that you really want to mess with. Right. And if I if I put that energy out there and I carry that in every single room and every meeting that I go into, people feel that and they resonate with that energy mm -hmm. and they're, they all of a sudden they're like, Oh, that's, that's something this person has. I feel confident because they're confident. Right. Yes. And like that, that actually boiled into me and my employees. Cause what I did um, kicking off my business before we even had any money is I got like six employees and um, didn't have any money and got all of them to work for free. And what we did is we created a system where we would clock their hours and they could turn their hours into like money once we hit a certain milestone or they could turn it into equity. Smart. And in that, that time, like I basically had staff working for almost a full year before we had any capital because of that vision, because 
I got them involved in like, here's the vision of where I see this company going. Here's how I see it growing. Here's what's in it for you. And every single one of those people obviously ended up getting paid. They ended up getting equity. And we took you know $15,000 that I ended up getting and turned it into $1.8 million within 18 months and then continued to grow from there. That's absolutely smart. So anybody who's creating a business, I never even knew that. That was yeah. genius, bro. <laughs> that was genius. Like, listen, I'm going to clock your hours. And then as I clock these hours, this is going to become equity for you. And this is going to have this is going to have value to it for the future. Work free mm -hmm. now. Get paid later. Get paid but in later. order for you to get paid later, you got to put in the work now. So yeah. if you don't believe, that means you're wasting your time. So not only you get more people that believe. You got your vision. You painted your vision and your mission to them, and they was down for the cause. Yes. So they was down to work free. For, so for a lot of you guys who are starting a business, you have to be able to communicate your vision, your mission, to the people who is going to follow you on your journey when you're first starting out. And even when you, when, even when you do start out, right, and you, yeah. you, you, the thing is going, everything is moving, you still have to be able to keep them motivated, keep that mission in front of them, keep that vision in front of them, for them to actually be able to want to execute for you proficiently, you know, because oh, one thing to have somebody on your team, but if they just there to clock in and clock out, then you'll never really win like that. The the people who win is the people who can get a, get the vision out to their team and say, this is where we're going. This is why we're doing it. And this is what we're going to get out of it when it happens. Mm -hmm. And the confident part, just to rewind on that, some of my biggest deals it's because how confident I am when I talk to them. Exactly. I don't exactly. care. I just I start, and, and I learned this from Bill <laughs> Gates too. Bill Gates said, "Agree and figure it out later." Somebody mm -hmm. like yo, spec, you can do the hell. Yeah, I could do that. Easy. So we <laughs> lock the deal down. I'm like, yo, all right. How the hell are we gonna figure He's this out? I'm gonna do this. <laughs> how are we gonna figure this out? Right. Yeah. Agree and figure it out later. You can figure it out once the deal is locked in. Right. And then the worst kind of worst, you say, hey, I need more time. And yeah. then they can say yes or no. Like, but at that point, you got the deal locked in. You can go figure it out. You can go to a guy like named Marco and say, hey, Marco, like, I just locked in this million-dollar deal. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I know you're good at this. Let's go 50-50 on it. Now you made 50% of something you would have never had if you would have just been like, uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, okay, I guess. And it's like, hell, no, nah, I ain't doing the deal with that guy. You don't know what the hell he talk about. He don't sound like he know what he talk. That's the first thing he's going to say. <laughs> he don't seem like he know what he's talking about. I don't think our money's safe with him. Yeah, but if you yeah. come in there like, what? Build a rocket? Come on, man. That's it? I thought you was going to say something way more crazy than that. Build a rocket? Come on, man. What you, what, you wanted to go to Mars? Uh, easy. <laughs> come on, <laughs> man. Give him that contract we had Peter sign last year for the other rocket we did. Give it to you ain't got it? All right, we're going to send you that. What's your email? And then as soon as you send the emails, like, yo, we need to send him a contract because we ain't never built a rocket before. We ain't never built and, the uh, <laughs> and, But the confidence, the way that you say it, the confidence, the way it comes out, it's like, I need to I need to be around this person. I, yeah. this, I feel safe with my money and my project in this person's hand, and you go figure out how to build the rocket later. Well, bro, and you you know what you just said that's so dope is like I think there's two things that this combines um, for people to really take away. One is definitely that confidence, and I'm gonna add in there the integrity, right? Of like that you're like, yo, you know what? Like I can I can lock down something, and I can say I'm willing to go out there and put myself on the line to accomplish this, mm -hmm. and I have enough integrity to be like, if I can accomplish it. I'm I'm definitely gonna do it. Like, and if I if I start hitting roadblocks, like then yeah, I have the ability you to let them know. shift and switch yeah. and let them know. But yeah. the second piece for me is the moment that I open up my mind and mm -hmm. I realize that my resources are not just limited to me. And mm -hmm. I look at this whole fucking world, like you just said. I'm like, yo, like I'm about to do something, and it's it's about blowing up people in social media. Let me hit up spec. Like, I got this. Like, yep. I'm about to do something, and it's about, you know, whatever it is, like, investing in a 401k. It's like, I may not know anything about that, but if I can find a resource that is an expert at it, then yeah. instead of me trying to be an expert at all things, I surround myself with a team of experts. Yes. I'm constantly there to reach out. So if somebody comes to me and says, here's what I want to accomplish, the beautiful thing is whether I know how to do it or not, I know how to bring together the people that do. Exactly. Right? And that, that can be the thing in and of itself that somebody gains a lot of trust from you on. 
Well, that's what all the wealthy do. Like, I don't yeah, have they don't to. Do shit. Like, I don't have to be the <laughs> smartest person in the world. Whatever mm -hmm. I need, it's one phone call away. Yep. No matter what I need, so I just got to look at my phone book, and that's why, when you make yourself resourceful, then you become more of an asset to people, and yes, the more yes. you become an asset to people, they become an asset to you. So now, by you always giving value, when it's that time for you to need something, they're more likely to help you or mm -hmm. to find somebody who can help you. Because even though definitely. my resource list only goes so far, if I'm a starting entrepreneur, you can find out of that resource, those resources have branches and arms too. Yeah. Because now yeah. they're friend, friend, like you're a third connection, the second degree, second degree connection, third degree connection. But no matter mm -hmm. what, you're still a connection. So you have to get out. You have to mingle. You have to network. You have to add really value to network. people and figure out a way that you can actually bring things to the table for people that's around you, especially if it's people that you know. So I always say it's a disservice for you to have information that can help somebody and, and don't give it to them. Yeah, you got it. You got to share, man. I mean, and you, you're a perfect example of that, of getting on both with the Avazar Academy and being on here dropping gems all the time. And I, I, I just got to say this real quick and, and continue, man. I'm so freaking proud of you. Like seeing seeing this whole evolution, man, for freaking yeah, more than a decade. Yeah. Like it's just, and I, and, and I, I mean, the thing, the thing is, is that like you constantly sought information and you sought to see like how you could absorb and learn from other people and it has paid off in like leaps and bounds brother like it's and it, but it's just a perfect example for everybody is like when you you like one reach out and then you're constantly being that person that is there to give and is there to support other people then you become that thing that's top of mind for them so the next mm -hmm. time they've got like some deal or they yeah. got something they're working on. They're like, you you become the first person they're thinking of. Like, oh, oh you know wait, what? Top like, of spec, mind. spec helped me out with this thing yes. like last week. Reciprocate. Like, so simple. And it could be like an article you're sending. Like, don't don't like downplay things. If you don't think you have like a million dollars to give somebody, you can give somebody information. You can give them a like, hey, how you um, doing? Just thinking energy. about you. Like, <laughs> energy, anything. Some people just need good energy. Some people just yeah. need somebody to be positive around them. And just that alone might, will take you far. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pessimistic energy vampires that's around people that when you come around, they're like, man, I really like this person. And they just exactly. want to see you win just because they like you. You know what I mean? At times people are like, yo, I really like that person. Give it to him. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, get a job to him. Well, but, but travel over here. Like, he has a billion dollar company. Sure you want to give? Nah, I like well, spec. Man. Give it to spec, right? I like spec. Right, and Yo. just it's good energy. You got you, you. You're just a good person. Integrity, like you're always willing to learn. You're always willing to be pleasant around that person. Like and and giving back. Like that's what it takes. And with that formula alone, you will see yourself just grow into this butterfly that everybody wants to help and see grow. Yeah, yeah. Right, and just so you guys have some background on Marco, like I knew Marco for eleven years since two thousand and nine. <laughs> right, it's, it's been a while. So he's seen like. He's seen Speck, Tack, that <laughs> chick in the back, trying to beat it up like an Everland punching bag to Mr. Spectacular who owns an online business in the E5000, fastest growing company in the America. Whole transition, bro. Best probably owned company in America <laughs> to what's up, baby, take them panties off. <laughs> he, done seen, he done seen both of them. He done seen both of them. <laughs> oh man. Why well, Marco bro? Thanks for jumping on, man. Yeah, I no, appreciate you, brother. Stay stealth and keep keep doing what you're doing, man.